My name is Paul Travis. I was just thinking as I was driving over, how long have I been at this? And I thought, and I thought, it's been about 12 years since I read uh, Michael. Go ahead and flip open the first page. And you'll see a good friend of mine, Michael B., Michael Bronstein. He's a good egg, really good egg. He's Heartland Healing, if you want to go and take a look at alternative healing therapies. He wrote a book, well, I actually wrote it pretty much the same article, that he updated it, uh, 12 years ago. It was in the reader back then. I don't think they even have the reader around. It's called The Weekly now. And he's no longer with The Weekly, but he was with The Reader for years. Um, I wrote, uh, I was a pretty sick man, man back then, and I was looking for places and things, and how to get hit, you know, how, how, how lots of problems. I had a heart attack, I was smoking, lots of coffee. I was, you know, a pretty sick man. And I was looking for a way to straighten myself out. And iridology sure helped. Uh, here it is 12 years later, and so I've actually, I, I talked to Mike in the, for rewriting that article about five years ago, and he put it back in the reader, and so it gave me a chance to rerun the copy and put it in my little, uh, kind of gives you an overview, a quick overview of what iridology is. I want you to read that if you get time. In fact, this entire packet, I'm going to go through really, really, really quick, and I'm going to let you read it. Um, the lecture portion of this is uh, for the taping and whatever, whoever's not here, will, uh, will help with those who need the basic understanding of what this is really all about. But the actual practices, what we actually learn this is where we actually do. It's like welding. Well, you can talk about welding all day long, but until you actually do it, it doesn't mean a thing. It's like driving a car. You can talk about driving a car all day long, but it doesn't mean a thing until you actually do it. And then you start seeing, ah, 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 it starts to make sense. And I've been at it long enough to know that the chart, which is on page, keep flipping until you get to a chart, it's two uh, irises, uh, the right and the left iris. This is by Bernard Jensen. And Bernard Jensen was a, actually expired, moved on to a different realm several years back at age 84. And this is the book that I used to, uh, 12 years ago, I bought and read, and obviously, you know, there's some notations here. <laughs> um, and that's what this comes from, both the books, the bulk of the text. We'll be doing basically what we're, you'll be doing your own chart today. That's why you have pins and charts. And what you'll be looking for is something other than your normal color. Your iris could be blue, it could be brown. Theoretically, you're born blue or brown theoretically, and after birth, it could change almost instantaneously, if not in the womb, uh, due to toxins. This whole lecture is about toxins. Uh, according to Bernard Jensen and a lot of other think thinkers along the lines, he was a uh, naturalistic doctor, he was a chiropractor and the leading iridologist in the United States. He believed that toxins kill us. Well, I think AMA would probably agree with that. The liver shuts down, the kidney shuts down, toxins build up, we die. That's it, that, that's it. So if we have toxins in our system that slow us down, they call them free radicals nowadays. You've heard of free radicals? <laughs> Once we get those free radicals out of our system, then it gives an opportunity for uh, natural health healing to take place. That's where the alternative medicines come in. They get into natural health healing. The natural body's ability to heal itself, preventative medicine. Um, AMA doesn't like to hear a lot of that because they like to sell drugs and cut open and close up and make lots of money. We would like to prevent, on the other end of the scale, the naturalistic medicine We'd like to prevent all that from happening to begin with. 
in order to do that, we remove toxins from our system. What's the best way to move toxins from our system? Well, where do the toxins end up? Well, they start here and they come out down here. Ten hours later, ideally, if they get st stuck in here, then that's where the toxins end up, in our gut, in our intestinal tract, in our colon. So if we keep that portion of ourselves extremely clean and tidy, and then we have no problems with toxins. I repeat, ideally, if you defecate 10 hours after you eat, that's what this man says is the ideal. Not a lot of people get into that category, so that's the ideal. That's what we're looking for. It's like plumbing. Actually, the analogy is very much similar to plumbing. What goes in, what comes out, if it slows down too much, you re-resorb your own toxins after 10 hours. People who lived 120 have some great genetics and or they take very good care of themselves and or they take care of their toxins. The only person I know is George Goebel. He could smoke a cigar and tap dance at age 102. Well, he had great genetics. Uh, we have weaker systems. I have a weaker system than George. I have to take care of myself. I, I'm not an oak. He was an oak tree. I'm more like a maple or a pine. You know, I have a weak system, so I have to really take good care of myself. I hope I make 102, but I'm going to have to work pretty hard at it to make 102 because I have a weaker system genetically. You probably won't hear a lot of that from other people, but that's basically true. I inherit certain weaknesses from both of my parents. My father had an intestinal tract problem. I inherited that from him. I even inherited the ability or the inability to have uh, what they call it, sugar by diabetes. I inherited that from both of my parents. The heart attack, well, that's just due to smoking and bad stuff that I did myself for years. Smoking will kill you. <laughs> it really will. Don't do it. But basically what you have is if you take care of yourself, even with a weak system, you can live to 102, but you really have to take care of yourself. Okay? What I'm going to show you is how to look for if you're an oak tree, whether you're a pine tree, you're a maple, I'll even get into that a little bit. We're going to run through this lecture real quick and I'm going to show you just some of the stuff what's in the, the handout right now. And then we'll get, get right into actually seeing it, how it works. Any questions along the way? Give me a yell. It's Mike. I suggest you read Mike. Mike's a good egg, good friend. Heartland Healing, if you want to, he's a uh, hypnotherapist. And if you need any problems smoking, stopping smoking, uh, you're not sleeping right, uh, whatever, he'll help you with that. The sharp man, one of the sharpest I know. Again, the chart, we'll get back to doing your own charts in a little while. We'll line up and we'll go ahead and do that. And then the actual lecture breaks in is where actually the chart sh shows that the spine and how it relates to the actual spine relates to the iris. How does that spine relate to the iris? Well, it's through the nerve endings throughout the body. The nerve endings send all this information for whatever reason God made this body to have this CRT, this computer printout, this computer right here in our irises showing us what's online constantly now in the present. If I should hurt myself, that hurt, shoot a hole in my body, uh, cut it, whatever, it would show up my iris that quick. However fast electrical current runs through the body to show up in the iris. It would run through the body and show up that quick. The nerve endings would show it that quick. So what we'd be looking at is online, what you are right now and what you have been in the past because scar tissue shows up as scar tissue. Damage to the system shows up as damage to the system. Next page we have then the I think that's the left side of the body. Shows the left iris shows the left side of the body. The next page, the right iris shows the right side of the body. 
And there's some similarity, obviously, the polarity in the body itself, lungs. The heart is on the left side, the liver is on the right, so there's some less than polarity. And the theory, what is the theory? What will we be looking at? If you have blue eyes, we'll be looking for something other than blue eyes. If it's brown eyes, it's a little bit more difficult because we'll be looking for something that's brown but not brown, your normal brown. We're looking for gray that's not you know, your normal brown. We'll be looking for white, which is like having a common cold in that area. Gray would be a little bit more than cold. Brown would be more than even that, be chronic. And then finally we get into We'll go from subacute to chronic, which is black, meaning the actual tissue in that area has disappeared. When it's black, you're actually seeing what's underneath the pupil part, and that's zero tissue. That means it's chronic. It means it could be cancerous, and it could be tested. You probably want to have a, If you have a black spot in your eye, other than your pupil, you want to go take that and take a really serious look at that at the hospital or a doctor, okay? Because that's potentially cancerous. Did everybody hear that? Okay. So that does tell you what's going on. It really does. And it's online, it's not a trick, it's the real deal. The rest of it explains how that tissue goes about. If it disappears, you're actually looking at the pupil parts. If it's darker in part, it explains how that comes about. The actual breakdown of the tissue, or if it rebuilds itself back up. If you're in the healing process, natural, naturalistic healing process, how do we get a naturalistic healing process started? We clean out the colon. We clean out the intestinal system with roughage, with bran, with um, psyllium husk. We clean it all out. Mr. Clean. You get this like the sink. We Mr. Clean the sink and there's comets and we get it all cleaned up and then we come in with Mr. Clean and we sparkle it up. Which Mr. Clean is acidophilus. It's a active, friendly bacteria. Many times it's the active, friendly bacteria in yogurt, unless it sits on the shelf too long and dies. So you have to be careful how you buy acidophilus. They claim it's active and alive, but many times it's dead. So you have to be very careful what you buy when it comes to acidophilus. Okay? And you can tell that by it, the actual results. You can know the difference once you've taken it. Acidophilus, cleanse yourself out, put acidophilus in your system, and that'll maintain your health the rest of your life. Now, the problem is what, if any, have you done to yourself already? Well, that's where the reversal comes in. If you can get into, and we'll talk about parasites. Well, there are fluke worms, and there's yeast infections, and there's whatever. There are all types of parasites. There's 102 that, 120, uh, different articles come up with different numbers, of actual parasites that are attached to or within and are around our body. Some of them are beneficial, some are, it doesn't matter, they're just hanging around. Some are not so nice, okay? The bacteria, the friendly bacteria, which is a parasite of sorts, acidophilus, actually is a, benefic a beneficial uh, parasite because it eliminates all of the bad parasites and it enhances our health. When we do that, we reverse all the negative and we start the positive. The body can start regenerating itself. A naturalistic healing process can take care of itself. And what it does is it reverses all disease and all damage, well, almost all damage, up to a point all damage. Scar tissue is difficult and you know, lung damage and whatever. But it reverses all disease from the head down, from the inside out, from the last disease to the first disease. That's Bear's Law, okay? With all of that, that should cover almost everything. The remedy is in the back. I'm gonna let you read through the rest of it. 
how to keep your colon clean, how to straighten yourself out, how to eat acidophilus, how to be a good person, how to live right. Now I'm going to show you the real deal. I need a volunteer. Please, sir, come on up. And he's going to be our guinea pig. Well, guinea person. I wouldn't want to call you a pig. My goodness. That, although pigs are pretty good people. And your name, sir? Tom. Tom? Yes. I'm Paul Travis. I'm glad you're here, Tom. It's good to see you have more males in a predominantly female. Good uh, to see that for sure. This is a light. This is a... Uh, magnifying glass. If I could get you to get your chart, we'll do a chart right away for you. And your pen. Bring your pen with you. Now there's high tech where you get a computer and a camera and three or four thousand dollars later it'll, it'll spit out the results. Or you can do low tech. Four dollars, five, less than ten bucks and you're ready. Okay. And a chart. Uh, ten cents for the chart. And what, 25 cents for the pen. So we're less than $10 here, okay. Okay. What we're going to be looking for, excuse me, is those are hazel brown something eyes, right? Yes. Were they ever blue? No. Were they always hazel or brown? Yes. So they're light brown, and so we'll go from that. That's the primary color. That's what we're looking at. Anything other than that color, then we'll tell him that it's other than this, what do we call it, light brown? If it's not light brown, then we'll tell him that it's white, uh, brown, not light brown, gray, or black. Okay. If it's those four basic colors, then we're going to tell him about it. Meaning, gee, we'll, look at the, we'll start at the left iris, and we'll 12 noon, and we'll work our way around. You ready? Sure. Okay, here we go. If I get you to hold that, and as a way of demonstration, I come in from the side and hold this like so. Not high tech. And wow, you take pretty good care of yourself. You're over 21. Yeah. <laughs> How did I know that? Secret, it's a secret. It must be the gray and the beard. I don't know what it is. It's lucky guess. Yeah, lucky guess. It's that platinum blonde is what that is. Okay. Okay. You really do take care of, very good care of yourself. I'm going to look at the colon first, obviously, and the intestinal tract. If you look at your chart, everyone grab your chart. And you look at the, the left iris, that's the big L, with the pupil, with the L. You see the first donut around the L? That's the stomach. And then around the stomach is another kind of donut-looking, strange, squiggly thing. And if you go from the, the left to the right all the way around, if it's the small intestine, the transverse colon, the descending colon and then the sigmoid and anus and so forth. So what you have are two donuts there, and that entails this part of your body. That which I lectured on. That's the part of the body you want to keep absolutely spotless, clean, because that'll reverse all your disease. Okay? All right, so that's what I'm going to look for first. And Tom? Yes. Uh, looks like you're doing a pretty good job, Tom. Uh, hmm, looks like you may have had an injury to your left leg at some point. Is that correct? Yes. And it hmm, might have some uh, parasites in there, small parasites. Probably um, yeast. Do you eat a lot of yeast product? Not much, actually. Cheese, vinegar. Very little. All right. You must be vegetarian then. No. Me? Yeah. Uh, mainly chicken and fish. Chicken. Okay. Doesn't take much to get uh, 
unless you do a, a parasite cleansing every year, you end up with parasites in the system. Why we end up with yeast in our system, which I'll find a lot of, is because once you take an antibiotic for whatever reason, it could be a flu or a, five years ago you took an antibiotic and it, your immune system dropped. And if you're eating cheese or whatever and there's already yeast in your system, it, the yeast, which is a, like in a microscopic stage, the immune system drops and that yeast then goes into a floret, like a flower. And that flower then grows in your intestinal system and it stays there until you actually do something about it. And that's what I'm looking at, all right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna line up and we're gonna take a look just at Tom's yeast and then we're gonna move from there. We'll, there's also a fluke, a worm in your intestinal system. I'm not supposed to be talking about this because this is supposed to what doctors do, okay? So you're not hearing me say any of this, right? I'm not here saying this, <laughs> but really, if you do it for yourself, then I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a counselor, I'm none of those folks. I just read the chart. I read the book. This is what you can do for yourself, yeah. I can tell that there's a parasite. Well, it's a dark little spot at about, oh, seven o'clock. You can see that. One by one, come on by, and then we're gonna get into three lines and everybody does each other, okay? Line up, here we go, I'll show you. We're gonna be looking for yeast and a, a parasite at seven o'clock. Do you see the yeast, kind of a orange? We're gonna make one more and then we'll go ahead and get three lines started. Well, you know, just whatever you can focus and then just bring the uh, light in from the side so you can see layers. You'd be looking for layers. You see the layers? You either have weaknesses in that area because you, of your age or your parents gave those to you. Yeah. I saw so, the three spots. All right, well, let's take another look. He has open lesions right in over there, seven, eight, and nine. Actually, they're closed lesions, but there's no color in them. They're simply weaknesses. They're just, there's, you see there's no color, they're just weaknesses. Yeah, her vocal cords, they're out of whack. She's talking to us, drink here. We'll see my Thank you for showing up. If you have any questions, comments, answers, inquiries, and I'll look at a few eyes before I leave. My card's available here. I have a show with uh, Mystic Fest. I, once a year, I do iridology. Uh, I'm also available individual. You can give me a call and we'll just meet at the restaurant or whatever. And it's kind of weird, the reaction I get, if you're doing it at a restaurant, they're going, what's he doing over there? He's looking into our eye. So, you know, for free. Because you're here, I'll do it for free. Any questions before we close this down? How yeah. much do you usually charge for that? Well, $30 to get me out of the house. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be sitting there going, ah. <laughs> See, that's free. Yeah, we can do free. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for coming.